Hi friends, how you guys doing? Thank you so much for coming by. Today I just want to read a very quick article to you. Um, it's the CEO of America's second largest bank is preparing for a possible U.S. debt default. Now it says uh, New York CNN Congress is once again bickering about raising the debt ceiling, the amount of the money that the U.S. government can borrow to pay its bills on time. And that means that the corporate America has to be ready for the worst. The CEO of Bank America, America's second largest bank, told CNN that he hopes lawmakers resolve their issues because the market and the economy love stability. Yet defaulting on the country's debt remains a possibility that cannot be ignored. We have to be prepared for that, not only in this country, but in other countries around the world. Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan, <laughs> I'm sorry if I didn't say that right, um, was on the CNN this morning and it says, uh, you hope it doesn't happen, but hope is not a strategy. So you have to prepare for it. Now, President Joe Biden may touch on a topic in Tuesday's State of, State of the Union address. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has already warned Congress the country could default on its financial obligations as soon as June if the debt ceiling is not raised before then. Yellen subsequently said that there could be global financial crisis if there is no debt limit agreement. The Treasury Department is now taking extraordinary measures to continue paying bills on time. The latest drama about the debt ceiling has led to some calls for the government to get rid of it entirely. The argument is the political squabble shouldn't prevent the U.S. from meeting its financial commitments. Minahan isn't a fan of that idea. He told Harlow that there's got to be an, there's got to be an a argument about how we make sure we live within our means as a country when asked whether or not the, the U.S. should eliminate the debt ceiling. Congre Congress has the purse strings. I would be careful about trying to restructure the U.S. Constitution, he said. I think we should leave it alone and make sure it operates correctly. But he conceded that the government has needed to spend a lot more on various stimulus programs since 2020 due to COVID-19 crisis saying that the U.S. has taken a lot of debt over the past couple of years to overcome the pandemic drag on the economy. The economy has rebounded sharply from the depths of the brief COVID downturn, and so much so that the inflation is now arguably the biggest problem facing the country, as well as the Federal Reserve. The Fed has raised, aggress has res raised rates aggressively, for the past year to try to choke off inflation. The rate hikes have started to work, but the U.S. job market remains shockingly strong. The unemployment rate that has stayed very low, extremely low, that, that's one of the challenges for the Fed. With that in mind, the Bank of America is still predicting a mild recession. At some point in the future, but the start date keeps getting pushed. Moynihan argues that the higher rates could be a drag on corporate profits, but the good news is most people are still working, earning good wages, and spending. Moynihan also didn't seem overly concerned that any geopolitical tension between the U.S. and China stemming from the recent spy balloon incident will have a lasting impact on the global economy. He told Harlow that given China's importance in the global supply chain, it's in everyone's interest not to have an economic tension to escalate. It's interesting to watch the shadow boxing between these two countries, Monaghan said. The best thing in the world is to have free trade. So as you could tell, um, there's a lot going on and the second largest bank you know, here in the U S is preparing for a possible default. So how do we prepare ourselves at home? How, how do we prepare and try to protect ourselves? Um, as preppers, we do various things. Um, we always say, keep a certain amount of small cash, small bills in your home, um, enough that could carry you for, you know, 
whatever amount of time you feel is reasonable with what you have. Um, if you own a small business, it may be um, a larger stash than most versus somebody that just needs to make sure they take care of their rent or their mortgage and maybe some medicine, their medical supplies, um, making sure they can pay their insurance if something happens with the banking system where you can't get your money. So you want to be able to have enough money to pay whatever you need to pay in case something happens, have them in small bills, because if you go into a store and something happens that their systems aren't working, but they're accepting cash and not returning any change, you want to be able to give the lowest amount of money possible not to lose out on anything unnecessarily. Other things that we can do to protect our homes is making sure that we fortify our homes with everything that we need from food to medicine, to water, to a means of protection. Um, make sure you have your medications lined up, make sure you've been to your doctor's appointments, work on your health, work on your spiritual armor and get your homes prepared. Doesn't matter if you're a renter or if you're a homeowner, it doesn't matter if you live in a, on a mobile home in an apartment or a townhouse or, you know, a detached home. We can all do things in our homes to try to prepare seasonally. Right now we are experiencing winter. I am in the state of Maryland. So there are certain things that I could be doing here to help set back some of our bills um, by making sure my windows are lined with plastic, making sure I have my draft guards underneath the drafty windows, not windows, but doors, um, adding insulation to the drafty areas, including sliding doors, any old rickety windows, making sure that we cover them up properly. Try to keep back as much as the cold as possible so our heating bills won't be so high. Making sure it's our toilets are running properly, there's no leaks, so you're not going to get some crazy water bill. And um, making sure you change out your bulbs to LEDs, which are more cost effective and save money. Um, there's other things that you could do besides not going out to eat as much, maybe preparing more home, more home cooked meals, learning how to cook. If you're not a person that cooks, that's always something that's nice to learn and doing little things, baby steps, um, will make a great, great, great impression on your wallet, your pocket at the end of the day versus going out to eat, um, a whole lot because it's just not something that you do. So learn something new, um, learn anything new from mending clothes to cooking, to home repair, to, um, little, little minor things that you could do yourself to save money here and there. Um, a lot of people try to change their own oil changes and what have you and things like that. And speaking about vehicles, make sure your vehicles are properly maintained. Make sure you have your oil changes because that's the lifeblood of your vehicle. Don't ever drag your feet on that. Um, if you have a well-maintained vehicle, it will take care of you. So make sure you take care of your car and all the little things for maintenance because it'll make your car last longer. And always think mm, if your car is having some major issues and you're looking at some hefty repairs, think logically about, should I go ahead and make this repair or should I get into a new vehicle with a anywhere between four to six to $700 monthly payment, not including, you know, here in the state of Maryland, um, mandatory full coverage insurance for a new vehicle, which could be quite hefty. So you got to look at all your angles. And, and if you're in a tight position and you're holding down more than one job, or you just lost one of your jobs, you got a part-time job, then you want to look at the different things in your life that you could maybe get rid of temporarily cable services and things like that, but keeping your phone on so you can still have access to things that you want to access and communicate for job offers and with family in case of emergency, medical emergency and things like that. You might want to look at your insurance um, co-pays for your vehicles, things like that, including your homeowners. If you're a homeowner, your co-pays mm. on your um on your insurances for your homes. If you need to make a little alteration for a little while, just to make things to make more sense. Um, there's lots of things that we could do and always keep a lookout for sales to bring in the things that you need at a good price. So thank you so much. And let's prepare ourselves as well, just like the banks are for a possible default. And let's just keep working towards positive goals. Thanks for coming by.